The Point of View is brought to you by Cowbell Coffee. Cowbell Coffee. Taste it. Love it. Kel Chaco Toothpaste. Kel Chaco. Happy Smile. Enterprise Life. Enterprise. Your Advantage. Bell Aqua Active. Bell Aqua Active. Stay true to originality. Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. We're live and interactive. And tonight we have a big, big man on the studio to discuss a lot of things. And, of course, Parliament is in recess. MPs are dealing with other matters. But uh, we found a way to get the minority leader in Parliament to sit with us to answer questions on a wide variety of issues, national economy, the state of parliament, where we are going as a country, our politics, cost of living, and other matters. Send in your thoughts on our WhatsApp number on the screen. When we come back, Harun Idrisu is my guest. <laughs> Welcome back. So tonight, my guest is the is five-time MP for Tamale South. He's been MP since 2005. He's been minister for many portfolios, minister for trade, minister for communication, minister for employment and labor. These days, he is the minority leader for a parliament which some consider to be hung. At the end of the election 2020, both parties, the NDC and MPP, had 137 seats. That's presented a whole new possibility for what can happen. For the first time as well, we have somebody from the minority side as Speaker of Parliament. What does all of this mean for our democracy? Harun Idrisu is my guest. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Bernard, and thanks for the opportunity to be here mm. and for dragging me out of my holidays into some discussions of matters which are pertinent to the Ghanaian people and the issues that we all can uh, speak to in order to improve the lot of the Ghanaians. So my honor and pleasure to be so here. So what does a, uh, an MP do when parliament is on recess? Largely, we exercise, apart from the traditional known functions of a uh, member of parliament, lawmaker, legislation, oversight, the most critical function is uh, representation and you represent the people so there must be some dialogue between you and your constituents and to reflect mm. on their aspirations and to deal with them for instance uh, if you were to ask me as member of parliament for tamale south mm -hmm. i essentially should be unhappy about developments in tamale where sections of my constituents were brutalized in the hands of uh, yeah. the police in napanzo leading to what has unfortunately led to the close down of NETCO, I should be in the constituency this weekend to address those concerns mm. and to make sure that there is a camaraderie between the uh, provider mm. of electricity mm. and the consumers of electricity with each person knowing what their obligations and responsibilities are. I don't think that mm. you need uh, a normless uh, society, mm. where, but uh, uh, brutality certainly not uh, acceptable. Excessive use of force certainly not uh, acceptable mm. within the law. So that's of one manner. issue of concern. So you must go and engage your constituents. Now, mm. in the constituency, I have a peri-urban constituency mm -hmm. and a rural deprived constituency. There still are problems with access to roads. I hear the people of uh, Dungu, uh, the area in uh, Kapaile, and uh, many other areas between Jerugu mm -hmm. talking about the deplorable roads. And then Vitung, Vitung, Dabashi, through Kudla, and others still not happy about mm -hmm. the state of their roads. So you need to appeal to them. What efforts you are engaging to get the roads uh, fixed, I see. and probably the failure of central government to be able mm -hmm. uh, to deal with them. You have this major Kobul Mahago road. I see a contractor on it, still not uh, satisfactory. Mm -hmm. The rains have caused its own uh, havoc. Mm -hmm. And you still have uh, what you call and relieve poverty in our society, largely from the deprived uh, north. Mm. 
uh, prolonged uh, unemployment, which has become a bane of our economy. I and I think that one of the enduring legacies of Nana Adedankwa Kufuado will be one of a grim economy. Interesting. If you look at Have you been involved in the approval the, of the MCEs? I have indication that the nominee for Tamale Metropolitan Area is likely to be considered uh, tomorrow. That's largely the business of uh, assemblymen, elected and government appointees. But it raises a fundamental question. Where do we want to go as a country in respect of Article 143 mm. of the Constitution? Mm. We all accept the principle of an elective chief executive mm -hmm. by the process who bears the cost. Is mm -hmm. it the state? Is it political parties? Will there be state financing of it? So the principle, where we disagree is whether it should be partisan or non-partisan, learning from other jurisdictions. And uh, the NDC, we pride ourselves, one of the most brilliant uh, persons of decentralization is ours, Professor Kwame Nahoy. He always will espouse what he appreciates about it. And I'm sure if we want to work together on it, he, together with others, can provide input as to what Did we miss a chance when the president said he wanted us to vote? Professor Aye of the University of Ghana, Legon, provide additional impetus into understanding how we can improve the president felt The president felt that your side had The president felt your side had sort of betrayed because in his reading of the constitutional review process, we were supposed to vote. No, I'm coming. And then he said he was prepared to give us the vote. Your guy said you didn't want it to be on a partisan basis, so we shelved the whole process. No, Bernard, you see, sometimes you people are too yielding. President Nana Kufuado got it wrong constitutionally. Read Article 143 very well. He only sought to deal with the surface of a wound. His letter to Parliament, I can give you an official copy, was to discuss how a district chief executive is to be removed from appointment to elective. His letter on the constitutional process was silent on how a DC can be removed. So we relied on it, and he suffered constitutionally because he didn't get it right. His letter was not all encompassing. You can go back to the correspondent. If you say that I want an amendment to Article 1431, mm -hmm. which deals with only removing appointed to elective. Then you are silent on 1433 and others. You are silent on Article 148 and others, which all borders on the same So did you matter. point that out to him and say, come back again, or you rejected it totally? Oh, I was strategic and tactical. I wanted a lapse of a period where he couldn't walk back. Then we drew his attention to it. That's what we did. But what's your interest? Because I thought you were just discussing that if we would choose our own leaders at local my level, interest, that process for my, Ghana would my, be better. My, my, voted, my right? interest, as I have read from literature and guided, as I said, by persons uh, like Professor Kwame Nahua, is to understand the nature of Ghanaian society. In many areas, you are likely to have a one-way traffic of who emerges as district chief executive and metropolitan chief executive to the neglect and disadvantage of minority groups and tribes. You need to think as a country how to deal with it. I mean, if you have the area where you had a dominant a population of a certain social class, they were more likely to dominate every other. But you know sometimes you use some of these uh, appointments to deal with it. We can have a national conversation on that uh, subject. And uh, So will you be involved in Sule's no, uh, no, uh, approval? Sule Man, uh, I think his name is. Uh, but Do you know him? But I know him. He's been regional secretary of the New Patriotic Party in Northern uh, Region. Uh, we've done an assessment of him. I haven't. I've been. I've been abroad lately, so I haven't engaged the assemblymen to know what they are thinking is. But I believe that you don't. You expect him to go through. Tamale is the NDC zone. Nothing is going to change. Tamale today is for NDC. Is for John Mahama. Nothing will change. So what's your problem not having the? Uh, no, so I'm just. Uh, I'm, I'm asking. So and I'm saying, if you had your way, would you go through? Tamale will not change. I'm not. I don't represent the collective of the assemblymen there. Or oh, by your influential, you, are, you and your Tamale Central MP obviously uh, have a say. Yeah, we, we he actually told me when I interviewed him that he spoke to the two of you. And uh, yes, I, I, I saw him trying to uh, reach out. So probably for me, the most fundamental thing, that's what you do with the hung parliament. Let's see a roadmap to radical constitutional amendment beyond what uh, Professor Mills did in 2010, appointing Professor Emeritus uh, Fiaju to lead the Constitutional Review Committee, 
what you can do, best practice, anywhere in the world. A hung parliament of 137, 137 gives you a unique opportunity to hold the country together and to undertake rapid constitutional uh, review and amendment. So should the president use the FIAGO report or initiate a new process? He can initiate and get the country along. We can get a 579 member committee, four from this side, four from the other side, an academic or a respected person of uh, 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 a jurist to lead the process. I mean, don't forget that President Mills even got a white paper issued on it. What is it that has stopped us from letting it work into having a developmental uh, constitution? You are unhappy about Article 78. Uh, ministers doubling as uh, members of uh, parliament. And uh, I've heard people take us... Uh, if to I'm told that the reason <coughs> some parliamentarians were not happy with the FIAGO work was precisely that. The, the, the suggestion by the committee that majority of the president's ministers should not necessarily come from the parliament. The country is not just parliament. I mean, what is the aspiration of the Ghanaian? No, people? but a lot of the changes have no, to be approved no, by you. No, by you parliament. get it wrong. This 1992 constitution Mm. It's excessively loaded with unnecessary presidential powers. We need to water it down. Why must the president appoint the chief executive of Kualibu Teaching Hospital? What business has the president No, but I'm not talking about that. I'm that. saying that. And I'm just saying. The changes proposed by Fiaju. Why must it be? No, I, I agree. I'm just saying that changes yes. proposed by Fiaju. One of the reasons people say it did not go through was that MPs generally didn't like the fact no, that... No, that's just one aspect. There were provisions on decentralization which was going to deepen decentralization, allow for devolution mm. of powers. There were provisions on natural resources uh, mm. management, mm. which was going to be fundamental in making sure that the state secures its interests mm. as we deal with many of these uh, mineral uh, resources. So I think I that what a hung parliament can do for our country is for us to see a constitutional review process put in place, mm. which is national in character, mm. representative of all the major political parties in particular, mm -hmm. with expertise, to guide us to transit into an improved constitution which does not have this kind of weighted presidential uh, power. Why do you keep calling it a hung parliament? Because we are 137, 137. That's what the Ghanaian people voted for. But there's nothing like that in our constitution. Yeah, your constitution didn't anticipate that, but that's what the outcome of the 2020 So you are using, a, you are uh, borrowing produce. the term from a different... No, it's not borrowed. You, New Patriotic... But what does the Hang Parliament mean operationally? New Patriotic Party 137, NDC 137, nothing but more. But by practice, you somebody... You don't have an independent... No, but what I'm saying is that by, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just trying to understand something. If you say it's Hang, because my understanding of Hang Parliament is that essentially it's immobilized. Not necessarily, and that is what uh, people who don't understand the workings of parliament sometimes expect too much from the political parties. Largely, in parliament, our decisions are at the committee level. Committee will make recommendations mm. to plenary. So we expect that when a committee takes an objection, mm -hmm. they will stay so. It is not for the parliamentary leadership to decide for a committee what their way of thinking is. Mm. No, but I'm asking because operationally, there's still a majority and a minority. Uh, within our standing orders, that is difficult. You only can appreciate majority and minority within the context that there's one political party forming government. Mm -hmm. But in terms of parliamentary representation, mm -hmm. it's 137, 137. Arguably, even though the independent have said that I'll do business with the other side, mm. so that gives them the advantage of 138. Because some people think that the hung parliament is more relevant to parliamentary system of governance. No, it mm. is relevant because, uh, let me give you an example. I've just heard the president announce publicly a new bauxite concession of Rockshore and make news out of 1.2 billion US dollars for Rockshore. Mm -hmm. Now, memory lane. Don't forget that the Ninahini bauxite mm -hmm. is what was given to Ibrahim Mahama of Exxon, Exxon Cubic. Cubic. Now, the Supreme Court made a ruling on that matter. Mm -hmm. And you should be interested in why the Supreme Court is silent on the same matter before the Supreme Court to decide the fate of other contractual agreements mm -hmm. relative to mineral resources within the context of Article 268. The predictability of the judiciary is essential in a country governed by rule of law. 
we've seen no action, we've seen no speed, we've seen no interest. Now, if you hear President Nanado say that I am given a bauxite concession to Rockshaw, mm -hmm. and you expect that a political minority with 137 will support it, we're not likely and will not support it, simply because the remedy is not in substituting Ibrahim Mahama for Rockshaw. The remedy is to walk back to parliament and give ratification to what was done. After all, Ibrahim is a legitimate Ghanaian citizen who is so if that, if to that, that deal comes. So if read, that, read, I, I know I have it. If that, read if, article if, if that deal comes, eight. you are just no, telling me that the minority will, will not. I say read 268 no. and get what that. Give me your constitution. No, I'll you, borrow you, it. You can, you can borrow it. I can, I can borrow no, it. I just, we don't have a lot purpose. of time. I just want to understand. We do. We do. What are you saying about this? So I'm just saying on this matter, in the management of resources, the Ghanaian people. People expect the Parliament of Ghana uh -huh. to exercise in the defense of their interests. Listen to what it says. Any transaction, contract, or undertaking involving the grant of a right or concession, so the right of concession to mineral resources, mm -hmm. and it says made or entered into after the coming forth of this concession shall be subject to ratification by Parliament. Mm. Then it says 2682, Parliament may, by resolution supported by votes of not less than two thirds mm. of the members of Parliament, simply, Nana the Dunkwe is MPP that. doesn't have two thirds, so mm. it will suffer. And it must suffer because you don't create opportunities for others mm -hmm. and put others in denial. You, you won't treat Rockshire on, on, on the merits Absol of absolutely. the agreement. Absolutely. You look at the history of absolutely. what happened to Ibrahim Mahama absolutely. and oppose it. Absolutely. So you don't get the two tests. Absolutely. absolutely. So it is not flying. And I need my minority united behind me to say no to it in order to send a signal to Nana Dudankwa that let the opportunities of this country be shared and let every Ghanaian be entitled to the full benefit of their constitution, regardless of their political affiliation. So the remedy doesn't lie in substituting Exxon Cubic for Rockshaw. The mm. remedy is, if it did not go through parliamentary approval, mm. subjected to parliamentary ratification. That's why the constitution uses the word ratification. Some people think that this 137-137 ought to see a stronger leadership from your side in opposing many, many things. Uh, I, I, I've come under enormous criticisms. My style is not combative, you know that. I mean, you've known me from uh, Legon. Why I disagree, I'll politely tell you I disagree. I've heard, for instance, and i just give you a, a, a very good example. Uh, around 2018, uh, Parliament was asked to give approval to this, uh, you remember, Acre Energy transaction. Yes which had to do with uh, mineral uh, oil resources yes. you know, being given from uh, the Cape Tree Point mm -hmm. to Acre Energy for about 100 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. At the time, mm -hmm. the NDC minority, strong to our convictions, defended our position because we said at the time that GMPC, which had then created a vehicle known as Exploco, mm -hmm. in order to be able to develop our own internal capacity mm -hmm. for the exploitation of that mineral resources was important. Now, I've heard people say that why did Haruna and his minority not object or oppose to a new ACA deal? Yeah. I mean, that would mean that I'm leading a somersault for the NDC to suffer from what I call a policy credibility crisis. Mm -hmm. In one breath, I was against it, strong. I even had to do a walk out because I did not like it. On my day of vindication, then I still say that I'm wrong. I'm sorry, I cannot do that. <laughs> that would mean that I have no credibility. <laughs> but essential questions were raised. Brilliant. Uh, the Honorable uh, Abu Jinapo, the Honorable Atu Fosin, raised those critical issues, value for money. At what dollar rate mm -hmm. is it 50 uh, dollar per barrel? Mm -hmm. Who has mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. an assessment of the well? What is the value of the well? We ask the incumbent government that how come that a transaction which was 100 million US dollars only in 2018 and 2019 all of a sudden is worth 1.6 billion? So we just gave a conditional mandate go negotiate. And I think that the larger question you need to understand is the West. They are moving away from fossil fuel into what they now call uh, this electrical uh, Renewables. thing. But we are not there yet. 
but do we have the capacity? Mm. Does GMPC have the capacity? Those are the questions I need to So let me to get raise. you straight. Historically, you've not been opposed to Ghana increasing their interest in any of Absolutely. these things. Absolutely. That was the NDC president. So your the issue GMPC is position. the details. Absolutely. So Value just to clarify money. a couple of points, there was a claim that the thing spent only one day in parliament. I'm not the executive. I don't introduce bills and those instruments in but, parliament. But it's this conditional approval you gave, how long did you consider it? No, yes, around just two, three days to Parliament uh, rising. I, I, what I saw was a 10-page document. Summary. And I say... Is a, that enough? I'm just asking. Is that a, enough? A mandate to negotiate and come back to Parliament for a decision. So it is not a fair complete. I know, but there was a, a certain threshold given of, I think, 1.6 billion. And I billion. say not a fair did you, I, I'm just, did you Did you... Did you avert yourself to enough information to that 1.6 billion was even justified? Indeed, we even brought that figure down to about 1.1 billion. Uh, thanks to the Honorable Atu Forsen, uh, Dr. Kopna Donko, and uh, the Honorable Bua, and uh, my ranking member on uh, energy, uh, Jinapur, raised all those So when it comes back, what would, together, you, what would the minority want to the, say? Uh, what would the minority want to see? before giving its blessing to the arrangement with guided, ECA and we'll be, we'll be guided by the collective good. Is there value for money? How much has ECA invested to deserve asking for 1.2 billion? But how do you independently verify that? Good. So you ask for an independent appraiser. That can be done. They say it, Lambert did it, but the CSO still don't. When you look perfect. at the analysis, Lambert did so, they think that so, it was, it so was incorrect. So what is wrong with appointing an independent person to do the appraisal? So you, you are, will go so for you, that. So you will do that. But I have a difficulty somersaulting from my original position. I don't provide that kind of leadership. Consistency is important for me. <laughs> I'm consistent. I mean, two years ago, I said it was wrong to take away the shares from Esploco. Now, government comes back and say, I'm restoring the shares of Esploco. And you expect me to say no? When I think it's more than valuation ago. issues. Absolutely. At least for, so for, for the those coverage were, of that. Those were critical issues that were raised. And I'm sure... So just to be that clear, when it comes back to parliament, you There are simply people who don't understand the workings of parliament. And I'm saying that... I don't serve on the Mines and Energy Committee. I don't serve on the Finance mm. Committee. They bring a decision to plenary, and I'm guided by what the committee recommends. Mm. And I'm saying that I provide leadership. And I've always advised uh, the leadership of the minority. I mean, I've been a very liberal minority leader. That's why you see all this posturing of ranking members having their space in order that we work with common direction. You've had a lot and of I challenges. That I remember from oh, a Jaku uh, approval March this say, year, you said you are still in charge recently. And I say, w I will, what's going on? I will weather the storms. Those machinations will fail. And uh, I'm not perturbed by some of those things that are going on. It's simply to could, appreciate. Could it be your leadership uh, style? My style? When somebody just said that Haruna was in the U.S., do you travel to the U.S. with an expired visa? I don't have a visa to the U.S. You expect that I'm returning from the United States. That is palpable, despicable lies. You know, so uh, what style? I said I'm not combative. Uh, for instance, uh, when we come to discuss matters of the economy and matters of debt, we would be able to share why I think that the uh, president and Adu Daunkwa... I'll come there. I'm just asking be because I, 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 I <laughs> saw Do Ajaho back being in minority leadership positions under NDC, and I'm also seeing you, and I don't have enough information to compare, but all I'm saying is that I did not see the level of apparent mutiny from em emboldened disagreement oh, that I expect from, that I from people of the minority sometimes giving interviews and I say that resigning are, from committees. That I didn't are, see that. There are expectations of me as minority leader. But what I'm saying is that I come to the office of the minority leader with reasonable and resourceful depth. I've been in parliament uh, 17 years. I've been minister. I've mm. occupied uh, important policy space. And I'm guided by it. And I'm saying that in Parliament, mm. whether when the numbers were 137 or 106, 169, it was consensus. But where you have a disagreement, I've guided the NDC minority. Let it reflect that this is a minority position. Then I'm guided as leader to articulate that. And on many issues, for instance, if you take even the ECA debate, you see Honorable Abu Jinapo from onset say that, we reject this. 
until you bring satisfactory document, mm. including what you now call the Lambert Report. So what prevents this country from conducting uh, another mm. appraisal? We don't know what is in the well. I don't know how much... Has the NDC created uh, unrealistic invested. expectations for its followers? Which is leading to the type Not of at all. There are those, there are those who, who erroneously think that the speaker has a vote. He doesn't. But I trust in the leadership of Bakbin. I trust that he would leave some footprint on our governance architecture. Do your followers understand of, this? Uh, parliament. Because there was, there was, a, there was a, 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 a party it becomes, official it becomes, who took on you and Bakbin publicly and I say about your leadership. It becomes part of our responsibility to educate them. Don't forget. And I didn't hear Council of Elders come out and to say, I say this is wrong. I have been national youth organizer of the NDC. I have served the party well. Mm. I'm not minority leader by accident, please. Mm. I'm not. Mm. I have paid my dues. I've served the party and I've served in different capacities. And therefore, where there is, look, and I, let me put this on record. Mm -hmm. Haruna Idrisu, I've never taken any decision as minority leader alone. Mm. We normally will have a caucus meeting where the matters are discussed. The leadership of the committee will share with us their viewpoint mm -hmm. and what they think. And then we take a common position and we defend that position. I, I, I seldom will say that there were lots of uh, misjudgment when it came to matters of approval and disapproval mm -hmm. of ministers. But that I throw a challenge even to you as journalists, anybody mm -hmm. who has any evidence of criminality of any person. Crime is not statute bar. You can raise it, and the person will be taken across it. Uh, let me share this joke with you. There's a foreign embassy which wrote to parliament and said mm. that, oh, particular individuals were involved in visa uh, fraud and related matters. Mm. So during the vetting of the ministers, one of the names popped up. I wrote to the embassy. Up till yesterday, they have not responded. What evidence do you expect me to work with? Mm. <laughs> We'll take a break. This is the point of view. I guess Harun Idrisu is the, I don't know if, if I say embattled is a good adjective. He, he'll probably disagree, <laughs> but you can say that he's certainly going through a very difficult time as a leader of the not, minority not at all. in not parliament. At all. Those are my words. Not, I'll, not I'll stand by them. So we'll, we'll take a breather. When we come back, we'll see where we can deal with other issues. The economy is big. There have been lots of interesting agitations around where we are in terms of debt. We'll also discuss issues around the presidential jet which seems to be coming up quite strongly. And of course, if you have any other questions, I'll be happy to ask. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. Tonight we're talking to minority leader in parliament. You can describe him as embattled. He refuses the adjective, <laughs> but it's my choice of words. Many, many issues have come up in the past few months and days. And of course, Parliament is in recess. In a few weeks' time, they are reconvening. What type of minority will we have in Parliament? Will they be united? Already, some members of some committees have resigned in protest. I just want to ask you a quick question on that. A couple of days ago, we interviewed him, and he says minority won't back government's move to purchase new presidential jets. I'm not sure you've held a press conference on this yet. He is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, and he says that he is very sure your side, his side, NDC side, will not back government's intentions to get a new presidential jet. Is that a minority position? Absolutely. Have you had a discussion on it? Uh, as a caucus, we haven't uh, met, but that's what leadership is about. I think that he's a ranking member for the Committee on Foreign Affairs, and therefore he reflects our position on matters affecting the pursuit of foreign policy and uh, diplomacy. And you must link it. I mean, what is this that we hear? That because the president cannot bath while he's in the air, he must go and buy a presidential jet. And therefore, we should be interested in providing for the comfort of the president when Ghanaians are reeling under economic hardships, misplaced priorities, misplaced expenditure, and therefore, he should not have But uh, should the minority but not collectively, wait, should you not wait for the full <laughs> disclosure of the details? I think that government has not been forthright in providing 
the details. And again, transparency. Government has not been transparent. We simply want to know how much does it cost for the president to travel. Nobody is saying that the president should not engage. I mean, UN General Assembly. Mm -hmm. It's not President Nana Kufuado who is the first Ghanaian president to be there under the Fourth Republic. Every other president have traveled to the UN General Assembly. And therefore, let us know what is it that is wrong with the Ghanaian presidential jet that you have to go in for a luxurious comfort presidential jet at the expense of the people. But you know, we don't fight this battle standing solo. I, I don't believe in that uh, posture. And therefore, what is important, I'm not aware that the caucus have met, but the caucus will, the caucus will meet as a matter of uh, necessity uh, when need be to but discuss But Black are not jumping uh, the gun there. If the couple has not met and he's gone on to say the minority will not support categorical, you've not discussed he's it. He's providing that's, that's, leadership as ranking member on the Foreign Affairs uh, Committee. This is a Foreign so Affairs issue. Absolutely. A plane can it also is, be financed. It, it can is, also no, be no. defense. He's providing, he's monitoring every detail of uh, the president. I don't respond to uh, individual positions on the matter. I'm to lead a collective, and I would lead a collective. What I do know is that, you see, you borrow for productive areas of the economy. You don't borrow for profligacy and opulence, and therefore that would be our objection to Nanado Danko. That is this his priority in a country where people, as I said, are still suffering from unrelief poverty, mm. growing unemployment. You know how many jobs that money can provide. Mm. Uh, so essentially, we, 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 we will get there. There are many other expenditures that I personally and uh, think that it's not right and it's inappropriate. We have a crisis of a fiscal deficit, and therefore we should be mindful of that. You've complained about our debt levels. When the, when the finance minister came to read the budget and didn't ask for more money, you didn't commend him. You said you can't drink water from an empty calabash. <laughs> when you don't have money, do you ask but for more money? But initially, people were expecting him to come for more money because and, of the, and, the and, state of the economy. And even that, you see, Bernard, the Ghanaian media and financial experts must do this country a lot of good, including Parliament itself. Mm. If anybody had a copy of the media review of the budget, I will expose to you some wrongs. You don't come to Parliament, I just compensation from 30, 30, 30 billion to 31 billion and say I'm not asking for additional money. When you got approval, you got approval for 30 billion. If you look at goods and services, it rose from 5.8 billion to 8.3 billion. Whose goods and services? How do you account for that? If you have a copy of it, I'll show you the discrepancy. So to say that he didn't ask for money, he was just being tactically correct, but not economically correct. Because those goods and services, you must have it budgeted for. So for me, it was more, and I stated it in my closing remarks and even in my debate, it was more like parliament amending the appropriation act quietly through that uh, 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 vote I, I, I strongly uh, but it's surprising to that, people that uh, a lot position. of these things you, you you have your say but still they have their way no not necessarily as you see so procedure is important if I if I have a copy of the media review of the budget, I think this was around page 96. I, I, stand I can pull it, but I, I, for <laughs> yeah, me, I'm thinking more the principle than the details. Uh, no, the, the principle is that you have adjusted goods and services from 5.8 yeah. yeah. to 8.3 billion. Yeah. So that means that something has changed. You have changed compensation from 30 billion to 31 billion. It means that something has changed. Yeah. But you know, Ken Oforata, smartly what he did yeah. was to make some savings from debt service the interest regime, and then plow it back and say that I don't need But I'm saying that, that after the debate, the, ba the budget was approved. The yeah. statement was approved. It wasn't rejected. You don't want a country to run at a standstill. Businesses will suffer. The corporate world will suffer. Workers will not get their compensation. A lot of things go into the decisions that parliament takes. It does not mean that when we critique, the duty now becomes yours. No, that but the media you have the power. will reflect if, on those if, issues. If what he's done in principle is wrong, you are the one who can and stop I'm it, not the media. We can only give comments. Bernard, I have no hesitation accepting that the power of parliament as the controller of the purse remains a constitutional myth. Mm -hmm. The power of parliament in exercising oversight over budget remains a constitutional myth. Mm -hmm. Parliament itself cannot have its own budget. So what is this that parliament controls budget when parliament itself has inadequate Is it a case of scratch uh, your back, provision? I scratch my back? Because 
Parliament also benefits from the largesse. As I said, our democracy largely is executive-driven, present-driven. So provisions are made adequately for the present. That's why there's provision being made for his comfort, to get a new aeroplane of luxury when you have uh, what is a presidential jet. So even if you say you impose that, person. you can't stop it? We can. So that is why I gave you the example where we had to work out. Many of these things, when they come, and we meet as a minority caucus. We will deliberate on it. We will take guidance from the leadership of the committee, the ranking, deputy ranking, and collectively we'll take a position. And for the record, I have never, ever taken any decision without consulting the structures of the party, particularly the leadership of the party. I normally will defer to them. Even when a bill comes to parliament, the first thing I do is to refer it to them for policy brief as mm. to how they would want us to uh, do it. Uh, but just to uh, stampede us because somebody disagrees with me. Just I'm a quick point, because on the, on the uh, <laughs> mining thing, you said 268, because they need a two-thirds majority. That's my understanding of the question. That's one, you are very clear that you can stop it. When it comes to simple majority things, with even 137, 137, you don't have the confidence it depends. that... I'm asking because of, on the election of speaker, you were able to get more votes than they got. I mean, Bernard, it is still my, to my credit and to my legacy that as minority leader, I moved the motion, call it the motion of destiny, for Alban Sumane Bagbin to be elected as Speaker of Parliament. I have every confidence that he means well for this country. He comes to the position with an enormous experience. And therefore, that should guide and re enrich our democratic uh, dispensation and strengthen parliament as an institution and make it more but transparent have you been able to and consolidate those gains using that expression that you, you managed to what, get some what, people in MPP to vote for Bagbin? What gains? What matter have come before us? Tell me. You see, you, you, the yeah, parliamentary you just told me that, session, For example, no, no, the no, finance no, no. minister used a backhand door <laughs> to get more money than he was supposed to get. Apart from debating it on the floor and saying you don't agree, most of these deals have gone through. No, which deals? Be specific. Oh, I have your summary of uh, economic programs from January to June. Yeah, I have about ahead. 14 tax exemptions I can accumulate for you. Or Absolutely. So I you have about. Oh, I, I can. If you, I can go through a lot of it. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> NMS go project. Ahead. There, are, I, 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 at least from the financial side of things, I'm yet to see any uh, of the proposals in terms of financial agreements with companies, which some from which increase our our debt stock. That the minority said we will not approve this. Well, is it a minority which is proposing to borrow? It's the executive. But if you are concerned about our debt level, yes, you so can say probably, that for the sake of our children, we prob disagree. Prob so we we'll disapprove. Probably you want us to move to the US level. No. No. Where parliament itself will limit borrowing and say that as a rule of thumb, we don't want any government to borrow beyond 70% of GDP. Mm. We can take that position. But don't forget. It is not borrowing per se which is wrong. It's irresponsible and reckless spending of the borrowing. What do you do with the money? If you are borrowing for productive sectors of the economy to grow the private sector, which economic headwind is still access to credit and the cost of credit, nobody will question you. But if you are borrowing to buy presidential jet, we'll raise issues. So I said that from, how does that help so I said that from January, January till uh, August 2021, yes. all the loan agreements that they've brought have fallen in the category you just described, that they are legitimate. You have to be specific. If, oh, I can if a loan them. agreement is to build a hospital, mm -hmm. why will you deny access to a medical facility of a community which is deprived? If a loan agreement is to expand road infrastructure, why will you deny and say that I'm mm -hmm. saying no to it because they are expanding road infrastructure? At least it will ease the cost of doing business mm. and ease the transaction cost associated with this. Between January, on bet, I get it. Between January and June, we give tax exemptions to about 14 companies, the largest being B5 plus of about um, $40 million. Another one, you has $11 million. When you put it all together, it's in excess of 30 something million dollars. Here's an economy that's I'm struggling. I'm just going through your. Uh, this, and I'm saying I can share the coin to you. Eight parliament, fair, record of loans, conventions, fair, and treaties. Be fair, be fair to B5. I'm sure that those category of 1D, 1F mm. were stood down for further discussion and consultation in order that 
our position was that mm. you can't concentrate one D, one F in just Accra Tema. Okay. Let it reflect in Upper East, Upper West. Let it be in Boga. Mm. Let some go to Boku, Zaru. No, again, I'm just asking a general question. Let me, let me, I'm, let, the, I'm, let me, let me, let me but, the question. I'm saying that mm -hmm. if you feel the economy is not being well managed yes. and that our debt position is precarious, yes. has the minority shown it in this? approving of any of the loan requests which are increasing our that, debt stock so go to the debate the, the honorable are too forcing in debating the budget uh, supported by honorable adongo and many of our colleagues was to point out that ghana was in debt distress i mean you have a fiscal deficit of 11.4 percent mm -hmm. uh, fitch and even the world bank imf puts it at 13 percent that's fiscal irresponsibility but Simple. should it just be debate of Atu Forsen saying something? No. Because you are, not, you are, you are hung now. So yes. people, people pay, feel that beyond what Atu Forsen says, Atu Forsen can recommend where, as, where, as the ranking of the finance where, committee that you should, your side where, should say... Where that needs to be our position. And uh, go back to the hand side. That has always been my position. All the tax leakages are the port. Uh -huh. If Ghana fine-tunes what it is that we must get from the port, we have no business even worrying Ghanaians with their taxes. All the leakages are there in the name of national security. People claim, pick goose out of the port. That is not acceptable. We want us to do a forensic audit of what gets out of the port. Who is entitled to pay what? I'm told that about 2.5% of our GDP is granted in the way of tax exemption. Don't forget, when Ken Ofura Tab became the Minister for Finance, one of his early announcements to Parliament was a tax exemption bill. Mm. Yamutu, what has happened to it? Dead at birth because he's not committed to it. All right, we'll take and a break. When I come back, I'll, I, will, uh, I will read a few comments for you. Some approving, some criticizing, some questioning. This is the point of view we have. How do I do live? We're talking about parliament. They reconvene in, I think, three weeks. And uh, it's going to be very interesting. He's a minority of the MP for Tamale South. By the way, Tamale is one of the fastest growing metropoli in West Africa. If you look at the population census, that means that his position is now very big. <laughs> we'll discuss that when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. Tonight we're talking to Harun Idrisu and uh, we're discussing many things. The economy has come up for discussion. Uh, constitution has also come up for discussion as well. Ghana's debt stock has also been mentioned. Issues around supposed profligacy and all kinds of things <laughs> coming up as well. Somebody from a parliamentary committee sent me a, a message. I don't know if I'm at liberty to mention the person's name, but he says, uh, Bernard, my leader is so consultative in his decision-making that he is essentially called approved. He really disagrees even with a suggestion from a member of the caucus. Okay. So that's from somebody in parliament. There are other things I'll, I'll read later. Just wanted to get a few quick thoughts. By October, we are going to have to have all our SIMs registered. The process starts till next year, I think June or so. Mm -hmm. And um, people are supposed to use the NIA card to uh, achieve that. This government has prided itself in digitalization. Uh -huh. In fact, some people call Dr. Baumia, <laughs> Dr. Dijimia, uh -huh. because they are doing the housing thing. Uh -huh. We have a record number of people with national identification cards. Now the passport office seems to be working much better. You were communication minister before. Esla also appears also to be overseeing the digital migration, <laughs> although with some people disagreeing. What's your assessment of Ghana's digital transition? You know, Bernard, you give credit where you have to. Mm. Ghana still has a problem if you compare us to Rwanda and to South Africa in terms of mainstreaming ICT mm. into all aspects of our national life. So mm -hmm. it's a journey uncompleted yet. I've heard people use the word interoperability. Mm -hmm. Go back even to my veteran as communication minister, and the word was used by the Honorable Atachia, if you remember. Uh, under NDC, President J. E. Mills, through President John Dramani Mahama, fourth president of the Fourth Republic, mm -hmm. a lot of investment went into infrastructure 
and broadband investment, including even connectivity to our investors. Mm -hmm. A lot of the support that came through the World Bank, mm -hmm. uh, I should thank this particular uh, uh, lady. I hope I get her name right. I think she was uh, the spouse of uh, uh, the one who does uh, the Friday program, KSM. Okay. Uh, Clara, I should think, okay. they're very supportive in leading our digital agenda at the level of the World Bank. Mm -hmm. Now, if you say that SIM registration, and I just give you for the record, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, 20, in 2011, mm -hmm. the first SIM registration, subscriber identity model registration regulation, dates back to 2011, LI 2006, I laid it before Parliament. And if you recall, the essence of it was to deal with anonymous crime. Mm. You just have somebody send you a text message and mm -hmm. then insult you as Bernard or threaten you, you couldn't trace it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, law enforcement needed traceability in order to be able to do it. Okay. Where we got it wrong was the regulator not staying firm. I mean, nowhere in the world do you travel to and when you need a SIM, you just walk by the roadside to get it. They must get your identity. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, mainstreaming it into a national ID card, mm -hmm. relevant. If that is what you say that we should commend Aku Fuadu and Baumia, I have no difficulty doing that. But they must understand that a certain foundation was laid and they are benefiting from that foundation. That foundation was led by uh, 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 John Dramani Mahama. As far as the mm. building of our IT infrastructure is concerned, even the laws, many of it, was done under air. So, SIM registration was good about it. Let me read something I got from yeah. somebody at NIA. It says, prior to our coming to office in 2017, only a small proportion of our population, that is some 750,000 people registered by GRA with TINs. As a result of the effective rollout of the National Identification Card, <laughs> spearheaded by the ebullient Ken Atefa, which has been integrated with GRA to form the TIN numbers, we now have a taxable population of some 15.5 million people in just four years. And yet government is still struggling with revenue. So what have you done with those uh, increased numbers in terms of registration? I say I have no but, but difficulty. That's that's I haven't heard the president link up this to SNP He said numbers. it in Bulgaria, didn't he? No, even in his State of the Nation address. But yeah. he, got it wrong, uh, right. uh, he got it wrong there again. I mean, when he says that a number of Ghanaian people who are entitled to pension law, it's not everybody who is registered with a SIM or who is on your national ID card is entitled to pension. But I'm saying that I have no difficulty. What you must admit mm -hmm. is that the IT infrastructure of this country is not the doing of only the new patriotic party government. That's far-fetched. But, if you said but so. to the extent that the... Uh, you see, this is the thing. The vice president... In any case, even, let, let, let even today... I'm coming. To give to... You see, when you, when you, when you want buy-in for something, you, you, you raise the level of... The vice president seems to be coordinating it pretty well. And all I'm the saying, data and initiatives, I'm saying that those, which is yielding fruit. Those are all initiatives they inherited. The national address infrastructure, even me as Minister for Communication mm. back in 2012, worked on it. Now, subsequent to it... Even the national ID card, there was some start of it before the MPP. But took from seven fifty thousand to fifty million is is exponential. No, I'm not disagreeing it's, with it's, that. You should give them the credit for that. How has it been funded? Have you raised but those questions? But, but, but Haruna, if, uh, you, if, see if you don't register people, with that, if you don't register people, you can't. Touch and them. I say, how has it been funded? I I, 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 I would I would. I, be they, interested in there it. are different levels. And they, I say all I know is that for the premium, they pay two fifty. No, no. And I say for be the, interested for the regular is free. Someday, mm. someday, we'll be asked to account for the national identification exercise and how it's been financed. I know a public-private partnership of a sort that itself raises red flags, and someday would go into the matter. I have no difficulty saying that they have improved upon what they inherited. What do you Except think about proposals to tax Momo? I'm asking because, again, now the Bank of Ghana has an e-money law gone through. There's even somebody in the Bank of Ghana now who has a full desk on the electronic money side. So they seem to have put the institutional arrangement on the, uh, on the monetary side. Yeah. Now there's discussion about taxing Momo. What's your uh, comment? First of all, let me come to this matter of transition even from analog to digital. Yeah. And I appreciate the exponential growth mm -hmm. and liberalizing even radio and television in Ghana. Uh -huh. That has done a lot of good to the 
expression, freedom of expression and yeah. free speech, yeah. even though we've suffered some limitations with some excesses uh, again. Mm -hmm. But when you come to Taksin Momo, mm -hmm. you see, will the Ghanaian people and the mobile companies accept that? Mm -hmm. Currently, as we speak, and uh, only MTN seem to be profitable against other telecom service providers. On the Momo side? Not just Momo. There Overall. is something fundamentally wrong mm. with our telecom space. You must be interested in why Tigo Etel pull out of the Ghanaian market mm. and its consequence on our economy. Mm. You now have what we call the emergence of a significant market shareholder. Mm. And to that extent, I think that what mm. the Minister for Communication must be doing is to announce a digital switch over date for Ghana. I mean, I was in Antalya in 2010 mm. in Turkey when at the International Telecoms Union we took a decision to migrate from analog television and radio to digital television and radio. We need to regulate that particular space. And to regulate it, you can't just say business well, has the as process usual. been stalled? Because I think no. for the last time I checked, that process was ongoing. No, the process must be completed and an announcement made and Ghana goes fully digital. That is what we expect uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bame, the Minister for Communication, to be doing so that they can praise themselves that at least they have led Ghana into ending analog radio. You know what that gives you is spectrum dividend and what that gives you is quality in terms of the voice and quality in terms of the pictures when you move away from analog to digital. We expect that they should announce a national uh, uh, switch over date for that. Mm. And I have no difficulty appreciating that people are registering whether it's national identification or it's uh, SIM registration. Those are matters they simply inherited. Is the minority or as a lawyer, are you concerned about the number of people who keep failing to enter the Ghana School of Law. This year, over 2,800 wrote, only 700 passed. So another 2,200 would have to wait another year. Is this something Parliament or being a lawyer yourself, you, uh, you are interested in? Uh, 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 Bernard, we must demystify legal education in Ghana. And to demystify it, we must expand access to legal education mm -hmm. without compromising quality. So I think that the president must put in place a legal education commission, just as it's happening in Canada and U.S., mm -hmm. to understand it. Why is it that 2,000 persons must fail a law exam when they want to read law? Uh, we are a country governed by rule of law, and we are better off with an educated, unemployed population that not been educated. So the more you have people with legal training, the better for the governance of this country. We should see many, we've seen many of the academic institutions now liberalize the teaching of law. So when you go, it's a, a pyramid. It ends at the top there, and many are not able to cross it. We need to demystify it. So I would argue strongly for a commission on legal education to look into the merits of it and expand Some have proposed that in some countries, once you, are, uh, once you are trained LLB person, whatever, if you, you can even study privately and write a bar And exam. not even that. I think, Bernard, we should take the debate further. Mm. We need paralegals in this country. Mm. Train them. The mm -hmm. young people who are interested in having those legal background, what is our hesitation? Okay. And I think that a, 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 a presidential commission for a review of our legal education regime without compromising quality will serve our purposes okay. better. I've been given 10 more minutes to read your questions. So uh, business dashboard will take place in the next 10 minutes. I'm going to ask a few questions from viewers. So the point of view is going to extend for a few minutes. Samuel Padin says, good evening, Bernard. Please ask Aaron Idrisu what he meant by, quote, cooperation will suffer in a press uh, conference he held with some colleagues of his after the ruling on Asin North MP. Quick answer to that. <laughs> it means cooperation will suffer. <laughs> you will suffer. <laughs> <laughs> it means but why are you bringing the uh, why why is it there's a court ruling it's different from parliament so if somebody if a court has made and a i ruling, told you the predictability of the judiciary when you have the matter of salk why couldn't the court rule for every run of the election in salk when particularly case. you had the electoral commission only send a letter on the 6th of december stopping the people to participate in the parliamentary election that was wrong and uh, Bernard, once you take me into that world, mm -hmm. we are picking up signals that the Electoral Commission intends creating new additional constituencies of about 25, with 11 of it uh, in just one region of the country. We will resist it. 
Sorry. And you are picking up signals that the EC is doing what? <laughs> are working to create additional constituencies using SAL. And from what I'm hearing, they may want just 11 of those uh, seats to come from just one region of the country with the other 12, 10, 15 split uh, among other uh, populous uh, regions like the Greater Accra region and others. And I'm saying that the NDC, we are determined to seek major electoral reforms into 2024 and will not accept anything short of those reforms. That's your continue. We're not going to accept any declaration of results at any regional level or regional coalition. No Let every constituency and polling station impact on the 50 plus 1 percent as is weighted and computed. Nothing more. I mean, you don't have, when you say regions, Ghana for purpose, read Article 45 for this is very well. Ghana for purpose of election is demarcated into electoral constituencies. That is why you have polling stations. So presidential resource is not for nothing that the constitution says that the chairperson of the electoral commission is the returning officer. So every constituency resource must be declared at the national level by the chairperson of the electoral commission and not any regional coalition. Fair enough. And there should be a computation of polling station outcomes okay. aggregated mm. into a whole. Does your decision on IPAC is it not backfiring? Because a few months ago, you came up with some proposal Don't for electoral narrow, reform. Don't no, narrow let, let, only let me, to you, 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 Let me ask my question. Mm -hmm. You have ideas for electoral reform. Yes. Some people thought they were great ideas. Somehow, they are saying you can use IPAC to push those. You have not. So you are telling me now that EC is trying to create... When IPAC was not convened by the chairperson of the electoral commission, how are you going to push your ideas through? What are you talking about? But did about? you attend the, the last IPAC that was, that was held? Who was invited to that IPAC? Oh, there were political parties there. Uh, even when you appointed presidential, uh, you are, what did the uh, Jean Mensah, the chairperson, create? The one you had, uh, uh, President Rollis of uh, Blessed Memory and other seven. Even Dr. Farajan was not a member of it. With all his experience, I'm saying that the NDC will call for greater transparency, especially at the coalition of the results. Zero tolerance for cheating into 2024 will be our declaration, and we would police the ballot. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I don't find I don't find some of these excuses acceptable. I mean, in Tamale South, I keep my ballot intact, and I've said that. Look, for persons who love President Mahama, who wants his return just as I want, go to your polling station and make sure he wins. Nothing more. Let me if read he a few wins more comments at the 33,000 polling station, he will be the next president of the republic. It's not about running ahead of him, take a photograph and think that's how you are contributing to the success of the NDC. I think that we should go back to our roots. Operation Win Your Ballot Box. You remember I declared that in 2008. I should pay tribute to Antia Chavez. You know, she was the I'm wing. She was the wing let me read a few uh, comments for you, uh, Haruna. Uh, I'll, let you do, I'll let you do that at the end. Uh, Dr. Baba Zamu, master planner, Kintampo. <laughs> Haruna Idriso has done a fantastic delivery, but tell him they will be in the position for not less than 20 years. Uh, hello, Bernard. Please ask Haruna if we would get some public accounting to Parliament on the monies we borrowed in the name of COVID-19 and how those funds were applied. This is from We money. have asked for a forensic audit on the COVID expenditure, one billion uh, uh, US dollars. Uh, you know, President Nanahadu Danko has been very lucky. Mm. And the World Bank have given another rapid credit facility of one billion. And uh, mm. he must account for it. Uh, just look at the matter of a national development bank. They don't want to come through parliament. Mm. I mean, and you say you are committed to transparency okay. and accountability. That's okay. not right. More comments. Show me an advertisement of anything national development bank. Show me an advertisement of agenda 111. Show me. And you say that you are committed to transparency Your and accountability. Your colleague them to court, uh, Doc Roxen, Dafia Mepo. Yes, this yes, is a minority yes. uh, back he's, he's, action. He's one of our uh, uh, promising uh, new members of uh, parliament, mm. and uh, we intend to train him and many others, particularly in is this a new member? Le I think this no, is the second, I know or third second time. Yes, in yeah. legislative drafting. Okay, but I think Haruna led minority needs to do more to portray a true hand parliament to avert economic, <laughs> political, and social uh, excesses that is making Ghana worse off. It looks like their role as minority being the voice of the voiceless is being gagged by the government. Ghana is going into an abyss of backwardness. The minority will be challenged and will do this our is utmost, uh, from Tayman. Yeah. 
Bernard, I feel sick and heartbroken as a teacher hearing the news of government intention to buy a new presidential jet Absolutely. in the midst of this crisis. This President Krawa was wrong. We, artic Article 4, percent salary workers, will resist this backward thinking. <laughs> um, uh, Bernard, can it not be, be believed that the failure of minority to shoot down some of the financial deals or agreements forwarded to Parliament by the government for approval, contributing the high level of debt stock, they must wake up who they are also in the pocket of the, or are they in the pocket of the finance minister? We will wake up. This is Edinkra. We accept, we accept the challenge. I mean, nobody is saying that we are living uh, at a level that everybody must appreciate what the minority is doing. Mm. But don't exaggerate. A few more questions. Is it that will be uh, able to Ben, I please ask minority that if he has any intention of contesting for flag brushing position <laughs> 2024. And if no, what then is the cause of the seeming mistrust between he and some supporters of JM in Tamale and some parts of the country? A lot of JM supporters think he is against John Mahama. This is from Seydou. A figment of their imagination. I don't intend to respond to that. And uh, Ben, oh, you don't intend to respond to that? No. And I'm young enough to wait for God's opportunity tomorrow. And I'm not uh, in a haste. Are you lacing your boots for 2024? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, I don't listen. What, what, let me see the shoe I've been wearing. Whether they're even boots. Yeah, no, no it's, boots. Wearing, it's okay. It's not Kambu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you th What do you think of Dufour? I've seen the, the name come up in. Uh, no comment. What I know is that the NDC must be a party of opportunity. Mm. But I know that the grassroots of the NDC is decided in their minds mm -hmm. as to what to do with mm. the return. Because Neil Antivanapoy told us. But we must subject it to a competitive democratic process. I because Neil Antivanapoy told we us two weeks ago mm. that NDC minority, or that, let, me, let me quote him properly, just give me a minute. Uh, I'm trying to get the quote. He said that NDC is going for JM. Where is this quote? Forgive me. I don't, I, want, I don't want to quote him out of context. He says NDC MPs have endorsed President Mahama. The party will make a determination of his flag bearer, but those who can guess should be able to know who would emerge as our flag bearer. But we should subject to... to so whatever the president open, should vote? Open or? democratic process. There shouldn't, be a, there shouldn't be a Swedish declaration. It's a, it's a political party. If we go and acclaim, that's democratic. We can do that. Oh, acclamation can. Oh, 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 I see. So Aku, when you say open democratic, how has Aku Vado determined that last time you? I don't know. So, <laughs> so you are saying so, just so clear, why do you think that the demo, democratic cannot, doesn't mean necessarily voting? I didn't say so. I said how were those determined in the last? So what that, what, acclamation is also democratic. I think so. Where people endorse. I mean, I've run in my constituency. I claimed many times and opposed. Prince and says, is it's possible. Is it true? Okay, I get you. Sorry, I'm, I'm hurrying. I've, I've only two minutes. Is it true that he is in bed with the MPP and in the pocket of the president? Prince in Kintampo is asking. For what? <laughs> I have no reason. I have not been MPP since 2005. I have no intention to be MPP. And you can add it to your prayers that I don't wish to be MPP. Have you always been NDC? <laughs> I have always been. <laughs> I'm asking because when we were in the university and you were Nukes president, uh, president, you said you didn't belong to any party. Yes, and after it, I've left the university. I'm now no, 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 I'm asking, Because when you, when you were telling us at to that vote time, for you, you said you were, at that time, you were for Bernard, students. I needed to and reflect. And you, you agreed to cost sharing. No, but that has helped you. I agreed, <laughs> to, didn't like that thing, I, I agreed to get fund, give me the credit. You remember the Akusumbo Forum of 1997 with yes. uh, Professor Diamond, uh, the late Harry Sawyer and others, mm -hmm. when we had to argue that liberalize higher education. So give me some credit. So your pushback uh, to the no, cost sharing is... I, I say at the time, yeah. te higher education was not liberal. But there was we, no we, private. No, we, we, we felt betrayed. No, I'm just telling you no, what students felt. We felt betrayed. Those students today who have benefited from tertiary education as a result of their realization. Thank you. Do they feel betrayed? I'm just, no, that was what we They've felt. They had access. You see, you <laughs> needed to expand access to quality higher education. And that was an, even and an And I told you at the time that yes. I had no regrets. No, Haruna, we are not no in campus regrets. politics. I'm just, I'm just going back. And there. I said no regrets. Those were at good all, days, Babaro. Bernard, ask your lead, ask leader whether he has heard about the allegations of corruption against him by an honorable Muntaka by US based Kevin Taylor. Or oh, anybody who has any uh, evidence tomorrow can mm -hmm. walk to the police station and say that this the evidence of wrongdoing I have against Haruna. I think that uh, I would not elevate some of these uh, matters beyond just what you've said. But do you intend to pursue it? In, because in some instances, you've gone to write letters to specifically say if they don't retract. Uh, uh, in the Herald case, you said that. And I said, that you, 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 I, 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 you know that 
I also respect a liberalized, independent uh, media state of our country to hold persons accountable. I'm not saying that I'm above the law. And I'm saying that any person who has evidence of criminality of any public official, including me, you know what to do. He, okay. who, he who alleges must prove the burden is not on me. But I'm saying that my allegiance is to the republic and to the people of Ghana to serve them conscientiously, as I'm doing, mm. and to the people of Tamil South for the rare mm. privilege opportunity of representing them in parliament. Mm. I simply will not betray, betray their trust with money. Don't forget, I won't be buried with money, so why am I carrying the world? You have 30 to? seconds to tell your Tamil South people in Dagbani, beat, oh. beat them. Oh, as for Tamil I want South, to learn the language, so if you can just tell them something in Dagbani before you go there uh, tomorrow. You know how to learn the language. Come to Tamil and we will <laughs> help you to learn the language. Bianesan kana Tamil ama sheta pa soro. Nabo tu ne tamane net kona zabre lat lat ma eto azo kati chante burba kakatwa illegal connection ma zalgobe sale zalgobe dele insan kana biana kati nya. Nebu Pila and Bapusule Nuli, a metropolitan chief executive, and some kind of common assemblyman, my two basha or an apartment, Catania de Nosham Catamal Titone. Shall I bless you? So basically, he's, he's saying that the net code they shouldn't worry. <laughs> <laughs> the, assembly, the assembly member, thing, everything will be okay. They shouldn't worry. He'll be there to make sure everything happens quietly. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, thank you. Uh, Aaron, right, thank you for talking yeah, to us. Parliamentary convenes on 20 what? I think 20 C. Uh, normally, this session 26. is for the budget. We expect okay. that around 16, 17 okay. November. Right. But this should be by the leader of government okay. uh, business. Fantastic. But uh, we are ready. But I take part of the criticisms that they want us to be more critical of government. Mm -hmm. We will. They want us to hold government, as I said, cooperation will suffer. So if you don't understand what I meant by cooperation will suffer, now you understand okay. that there shouldn't be easy consensus. We'll follow but the we process. need to work together as a team Fantastic. and work together with one direction, not people taking individual positions. And we'll we'll that, follow the uh, process throughout. Thank you very much. Our Duke Mensah will be in Parliament. My, my name is Ben Adafle. The business that's what is next. Thank you for sparing us 10 extra minutes. Stay with City. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. The Point of View is brought to you by Cowbell Coffee. Cowbell Coffee. Taste it. Love it. Kel Chaco Toothpaste. Kel Chaco. Happy Smile. Enterprise Life. Enterprise. Your Advantage. Bell Aqua Active. Bell Aqua Active. Stay true to originality.